Rune 46 of the Kalavala. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Kalevala, compiled by Elias Lundrut, translated by John Martin Crawford. Rune 46. Otso, the Honey Eater. Came the tidings to Pajola, to the village of the Northland, that Vainola had recovered from her troubles and misfortunes, from her sicknesses and sorrows. Luhi, hostess of the Northland, toothless dame of Sariola, envy-laden, spake these measures. Know I other means of trouble. I have many more resources. I will drive the bear before me, from the heather and the mountain, drive him from the fen and forest, drive great Utsa from the glenwood, on the cattle of Vainola, on the flocks of Kalevala. Thereupon the Northland hostess drove the hungry bear of Poja from his caverns to the meadows, to Vainola's plains and pastures. Vainamoinen, ancient minstrel, to his brother spake as follows, O thou blacksmith Ilmarinen, forge a spear from magic metals, forge a lancet triple-pointed, forge the handle out of copper, that I may destroy great Utso, slay the mighty bear of Northland, that he may not eat my horses, nor destroy my herds of cattle, nor the flocks upon my pastures. Thereupon the skilful blacksmith forged a spear from magic metals, forged a lancet triple-pointed. Not the longest nor the shortest forged the spear in wondrous beauty. On one side a bear was sitting, sat a wolf upon the other, on the blade an elk lay sleeping, on the shaft a colt was running, near the hilt a roebuck bounding. Snows had fallen from the heavens, made the flocks as white as ermine, o'er the hair in days of winter, and the minstrel sang these measures. My desire impels me onward, to the Metsola dominions, to the homes of forest maidens. To the courts of the white virgins I will hasten to the forest, labour with the woodland forces ruler of the tapio forests make of me a conquering hero help me clear these boundless woodlands o miliki forest hostess tapio's wife thou fair televo call thy dogs and well enchain them set in readiness thy hunters let them wait within their kennels otso thou o forest apple bear of honey paws and fur robes Learn that Vainamoinen follows, that the singer comes to meet thee. Hide thy claws within thy mittens, let thy teeth remain in darkness, that they may not harm the minstrel, may be powerless in battle. Mighty Otso, much beloved, honey eater of the mountains, settle on the rocks in slumber, on the turf and in thy caverns. Let the aspen wave above thee, let the merry birch tree rustle o'er thy head for thy protection. Rest in peace, thou much-loved Otso. Turn about within thy thickets, like the partridge at her brooding, in the springtime like the wild goose. When the ancient Vainamoinen heard his dog bark in the forest, heard his hunter's call and echo, he addressed the words that follow. Thought it was the cuckoo calling, thought the pretty bird was singing, it was not the sacred cuckoo, not the liquid notes of songsters, "'Twas my dog that called and murmured. "'Twas the echo of my hunter "'at the cavern doors of Otso, "'on the border of the woodlands. "'Vainamoinen, old and trusty, "'finds the mighty bear in waiting, "'lifts in joy the golden covers, "'well inspects his shining fur robes, "'lifts his honey paws in wonder, "'then addresses his creator. "'Be thou praised, O mighty Uko, "'as thou givest me great Otso, "'givest me the forest apple.' Thanks be paid to thee unending. To the bear he spake these measures. Otso, thou my well-beloved, honey-eater of the woodlands, let not anger swell thy bosom. I have not the force to slay thee. Willingly thy life thou givest, as a sacrifice to Northland. Thou hast from the tree descended, glided from the aspen branches, slippery the trunks in autumn, in the fog days smooth the branches, golden friend of fen and forest, in thy fur robes rich and beauteous, pride of woodlands, famous lightfoot, leave thy cold and cheerless dwelling, 
Leave thy home within the alders, Leave thy couch among the willows, Hasten in thy purple stockings, Hasten from thy walks restricted, Come among the haunts of heroes, Join thy friend in Kalevala, We shall never treat thee evil. Thou shalt dwell in peace and plenty, Thou shalt feed on milk and honey, Honey is the food of strangers, Haste away from this thy covert, From the couch of the unworthy, To a couch beneath the rafters, of Vainola's ancient dwellings, haste thee onward o'er the snow plain, as a leaflet in the autumn, skip beneath these birchen branches, as a squirrel in the summer, as a cuckoo in the springtime. Vainamoinen, the magician, the eternal wisdom singer, over the snowfields hastened homeward, singing o'er the hills and mountains. With his guest, the ancient Otso, with his friend, the famous Lightfoot, with the honey paw of Northland, Far away was heard the singing, heard the playing of the hunter, heard the songs of Vainamoinen. All the people heard and wondered, men and maidens, young and aged, from their cabins spake as follows. Hear the echoes from the woodlands, hear the bugle from the forest, hear the flute notes of the songsters, hear the pipes of forest maidens. Vainamoinen, old and trusty, soon appears within the courtyard, rush the people from their cabins, and the heroes ask these questions. Has a mine of gold been opened? Hast thou found a vein of silver, precious jewels in thy pathway? Does the forest yield her treasures? Give to thee the honey-eater? Does the hostess of the woodlands give to thee the lynx and adder, since thou comest home rejoicing, playing, singing on thy snowshoes? Vainamoinen, ancient minstrel, gave this answer to his people. For his songs I caught the adder, caught the serpent for his wisdom, therefore do I come rejoicing, singing, playing on my snowshoes. Not the mountain lynx nor serpent comes, however, to our dwellings. The illustrious is coming, pride and beauty of the forest, tis the master comes among us, covered with his friendly fur robe. Welcome, Otso, welcome, Lightfoot, welcome, loved one from the glenwood. If the mountain guest is welcome, open wide the gates of entry. If the bear is thought unworthy, bar the doors against the stranger. This the answer of the tribe folk. We salute thee, mighty Otso. Honey poor, we bid thee welcome. Welcome to our courts and cabins. Welcome, Lightfoot, to our tables, decorated for thy coming. We have wished for thee for ages, waiting since the days of childhood. For the notes of Tapio's bugle, for the singing of the wood nymphs, for the coming of dear Otso, for the forest gold and silver, waiting for the year of plenty, longing for it as for summer, as the shoe waits for the snowfields, as the sledge for beaten highways, as the maiden for her suitor, and the wife her husband's coming, sat at evening by the windows, at the gates have sat at morning, sat for ages at the portals near the granaries in the winter vanished till the snowfields warmed and till the sails unfurled in joyance till the earth grew green and blossomed thinking all the while as follows where is our beloved otso who delays our forest treasure has he gone to distant estland to the upper glens of swami spake the ancient vainamoinen whither shall i lead the stranger whither take the golden lightfoot shall i lead him to the garner to the house of straw conduct him this the answer of his tribe folk to the dining hall lead otso greatest hero of the northland famous lightfoot forest apple pride and glory of the woodlands have no fear before these maidens fear not curly-headed virgins clad in silver tinselled raiment maidens hasten to their chambers when dear Otso joins their number, when the hero comes among them. This the prayer of Vainamoinen. Grant, O Ukko, peace and plenty underneath these painted rafters in this ornamented dwelling. Thanks be paid to gracious Ukko. Spake again the ancient minstrel. Whither shall we lead dear Otso? Whither take the fur-clad stranger? This the answer of his people. Hither let the fur-robed lightfoot be saluted on his coming. Let the honey poor be welcomed to the hearthstone of the penthouse, welcome to the boiling cauldrons, that we may admire his fur robe, 
may behold his cloak with joyance have no care thou much loved otso let not anger swell thy bosom as thy coat we view with pleasure we thy fur shall never injure shall not make it into garments to protect unworthy people thereupon wise wainamoinen pulled the sacred robe from otso spread it in the open courtyard cut the members into fragments laid them in the heating cauldrons in the copper bottom vessels o'er the fire the crane was hanging on the crane were hooks of copper on the hooks the broiling vessels filled with bear steak for the feasting seasoned with the salt of dwina from the saxon land imported from the distant dwina waters from the salt sea bought in shallops ready is the feast of otso from the fire are swung the kettles on the crane of polished iron in the centres of the tables is the bear displayed in dishes golden dishes decorated of the fir tree and the linden were the tables newly fashioned drinking cups were forged from copper knives of gold and spoons of silver filled the vessels to their borders with the choicest bits of light foot fragments of the forest apple spake the ancient wainamoinen ancient one with bosom golden potent voice in tapio's council metzola's most lovely hostess hostess of the glen and forest hero's son of tapiola stalwart youth in cap of scarlet tapio's most beauteous virgin fair tolovo of the woodlands metzola with all her people come and welcome to the feasting to the marriage feast of otso all sufficient the provisions food to eat and drink abundant plenty for the hosts assembled plenty more to give the village this the question of the people tell us of the birth of otso was he born within a manger was he nurtured in the bathroom was his origin ignoble this is wainamoinen's answer otso was not born a beggar was not born among the rushes was not cradled in a manger honeypaw was born in ether in the regions of the moonland on the shoulders of Atava, with the daughters of creation through the ether walked a maiden on the red rims of the cloudlets on the border of the heavens in her stockings purple tinted in her golden coloured sandals in her hand she held a wool box with a hair box on her shoulder threw the wool upon the ocean and the hair upon the river these are rocked by winds and waters water currents bear them onward bear them to the sandy seashore land them near the woods of honey on an island forest covered fair maliki woodland hostess tapio's most cunning daughter took the fragments from the seaside took the white wool from the waters sewed the hair and wool together laid the bundle in her basket basket made from bark of birch wood bound with cords the magic bundle with the chains of gold she bound it to the pine trees topmost branches then she rocked the thing of magic rocked to life the tender baby mid the blossoms of the pine tree on the fir top set with needles thus the young bear well was nurtured thus was sacred otso cradled on the honey tree of northland in the middle of the forest sacred otso grew and flourished quickly grew with graceful movements short of feet with crooked ankles wide of mouth and broad forehead short his nose his fur robe velvet but his claws were not well fashioned neither were his teeth implanted fair maid licky forest hostess spake these words in meditation claws i should be pleased to give him and with teeth endow the wonder would he not abuse the favour swore the bear a promise sacred on his knees before maliki hostess of the glen and forest and before omniscient ukko first and last of all creators that he would not harm the worthy never do a deed of evil then maliki woodland hostess wisest maid of tapiola sought for teeth and claws to give him from the stoutest mountain ashes from the juniper and oak tree from the dry knots of the alder teeth and claws of these were worthless would not render goodly service grew a fir tree on the mountain grew a stately pine in northland and the fir had silver branches bearing golden cones abundant these the sylvan maiden gathered teeth and claws of these she fashioned in the jaws and feet of utso set them for the best of uses then she freed her new-made creature let the light foot walk and wander 
let him lumber through the marshes let him amble through the forest roll upon the plains and pastures taught him how to walk a hero how to move with graceful motion how to live in ease and pleasure how to rest in full contentment in the moors and in the marshes on the borders of the woodlands how unshod to walk in summer stockingless to run in autumn how to rest and sleep in winter in the clumps of alder bushes underneath the sheltering fir tree underneath the pine's protection wrapped securely in his fur robes with the juniper and willow this the origin of utso honey eater of the northlands whence the sacred booty cometh thus again the people questioned why became the woods so gracious why so generous and friendly why is tapio so humid that he gave his dearest treasure gave to thee his forest apple honey eater of his kingdom was he startled with thine arrows frightened with the spear and broadsword wainamoinen the magician gave this answer to the question filled with kindness was the forest glen and woodland full of greetings tapio showing greatest favour fair maliki forest hostess met sola's bewitching daughter beauteous woodland maid telovo gladly led me on my journey smoothed my pathway through the glenwood marked the trees upon the mountains pointing me to utso's caverns to the great bear's golden island when my journeyings had ended when the bear had been discovered had no need to launch my javelins did not need to aim the arrow otso tumbled in his vaulting lost his balance in his cradle in the fir tree where he slumbered tore his breast upon the branches freely gave his life to others mighty otso my beloved thou my golden friend and hero take thy fur cap from thy forehead lay aside thy teeth for ever hide thy fingers in the darkness close thy mouth and still thine anger while thy sacred skull is breaking now i take the eyes of otso lest he lose his sense of seeing lest their former powers shall weaken though i take not all his members not alone must these be taken now i take the ears of otso lest he lose the sense of hearing lest their former powers shall weaken though i take not all his members not alone must these be taken now i take the nose of utso lest he lose the sense of smelling lest its former powers shall weaken though i take not all his members not alone must this be taken now i take the tongue of utso lest he lose the sense of tasting lest its former powers shall weaken though i take not all his members not alone must this be taken now i take the brain of utso lest he lose the means of thinking lest his consciousness shall fail him lest his former instincts weaken though i take not all his members not alone must this be taken i will reckon him a hero that will count the teeth of lightfoot that will loosen otso's fingers from the settings firmly fastened none he finds with strength sufficient to perform the task demanded therefore ancient wainamoinen counts the teeth of sacred otso loosens all the claws of lightfoot with his fingers strong as copper slips them from their firm foundations speaking to the bear these measures otso thou my honey eater thou my fur ball of the woodlands onward onward must thou journey from thy low and lonely dwelling to the court-rooms of the village go my treasure through the pathway near the herds of swine and cattle to the hilltops forest covered to the high and rising mountains to the spruce trees filled with needles to the branches of the pine tree there remain my forest apple linger there in lasting slumber where the silver bells are ringing to the pleasure of the shepherd thus beginning and thus ending wainamoinen old and truthful hastened from his emptied tables and the children thus addressed him whither hast thou led thy booty where hast left thy forest apple sacred otso of the woodlands hast thou left him on the iceberg buried him upon the snowfield hast thou sunk him in the quicksand laid him low beneath the heather wainamoinen spake in answer have not left him on the iceberg have not buried him in snowfields there the dogs would soon devour him birds of prey would feast upon him have not hidden him in swampland have not buried him in heather there the worms would live upon him insects feed upon his body thither i have taken utso to the summit of the gold hill to the copper-bearing mountain laid him in his silken cradle in the summit of a pine tree where the winds and sacred branches 
rock him to his lasting slumber to the pleasure of the hunter to the joy of man and hero to the east his lips are pointing while his eyes are northward looking but dear otso looks not upward for the fierceness of the storm winds would destroy his sense of vision wainamoinen ancient minstrel touched again his harp of joyance sang again his songs enchanting to the pleasure of the evening to the joy of morn arising spake the singer of vainola light for me a torch of pine wood for the darkness is appearing that my playing may be joyous and my wisdom songs find welcome then the ancient sage and singer wise and worthy wainamoinen sweetly sang and played and chanted through the long and dreary evening ending thus his incantation grant o ukko my creator that the people of vainola may enjoy another banquet in the company of lightfoot grant that we may long remember kelevala's feast with otso grant o ukko my creator that the signs may guide our footsteps that the notches in the pine tree may direct my faithful people to the bare dens of the woodlands that great tapio's sacred bugle may resound through glen and forest that the wood nymph's call may echo may be heard in field and hamlet to the joy of all that listen let great tapio's horn for ages ring throughout the fen and forest through the hills and dales of northland o'er the meadows and the mountains to awaken song and gladness in the forests of vainola on the snowy plains of swami on the meads of kalevala for the coming generations end of rune forty six recording by timothy ferguson gold coast australia